when I was really small, maybe like five or six years old, one of my very favorite things to do in the entire world was to pretend to cook with my sister in my grandma's backyard. We would use pretty much anything we could find. She would give us leftover grits from grinding corn to make little cakes. We would open up milkweed pods and roll them around in a rusty old pan so they look like little fish. It was great fun. And I guess it's not really a big jump from that to making a salad from my own yard today. And in fact, I think I'm gonna use some of the same ingredients. To start, get a basket or a bag and some clippers. Make sure they're clean and they're not used for anything that you don't wanna eat. Similarly, make sure that the plants you collect are from a safe place, free of herbicide, trash, or waste. For example, collecting plants under a power line is a big no. Our first plant is chickweed. Chickweed is a cool weather plant native to Europe that has widely naturalized in the United States. It's one of the first plants to green up in our yard, but I learned it was edible from Byron Ballard's class at Organic Grower School. Chickweed also secretes chemicals that inhibit the growth of other plants so it can really take over your yard. Both the leaves and the stems are edible, although right now it's going to bloom. So I just trim down the stems to the fat bits in the middle. Chickweed tastes very much like corn silk, and it can overpower a salad if you're not ready for that taste. But it contains vitamin A, D, B complex, C, rutin, which is bioflavonoid, Calcium, potassium, phosphorus, zinc, manganese, sodium, copper, iron, and silica. So lots of vitamins. Dandelion greens are a staple bitter green. They provide nectar and pollen to honeybees and other beneficial insects, particularly important in early spring when they're one of the only plants in bloom. Their leaves, roots, and flowers are all edible. If you want to use the greens in a salad, be sure to select young, small leaves, like the picture. The flowers can also be used to make lemonade and other spring drinks. A Mountain Express article from 2015 says that dandelions are nutrient-dense, loaded with vitamins A, C, and calcium, as well as many other minerals. In Chinese medicine, they're said to have a cooling effect on the blood, clearing heat and toxicity from excess fire in the body. Herbalists consider dandelion one of the world's top detoxifying plants. A diuretic, it helps remove toxins from the body through the urine and has traditionally been used by many peoples in spring tonics. Creasy greens, or upland cress, are one of the richest, loveliest spring greens to cook. If you haven't had creasy greens and cornbread, well, your life might not be complete. <laughs> Yule Gibbons, who's a master forager, reported in his book that 100 grams of winter cress or creasy greens contain an impressive 5,067 IUs of vitamin A and 152 milligrams of vitamin C. But like most greens in my life, the ladies in my family cooked the tar out of it and somehow incorporated both bacon grease and vinegar. <laughs> Now I like them lightly cooked, but also raw. I just take some young leaves and leave the plant to flower for pollinators. They shouldn't be confused with bitter cress, which is also edible, but much smaller, low to the ground, and definitely not as tasty. Wood sorrel, or sourweed as some kids call it, is in the genus Oxalis and looks something like clover. Sorrel is not as hairy and has double hearts, if you bite into the stem and it tastes sour and lemony, then it's probably sorrel, but eating a little bit of clover won't hurt you either. There are some ornamental varieties of sorrel that turn a deep purple color. The mint family is something that's great to have in your yard, both for personal use and for pollinators. I think this is spearmint. I grabbed a stem from a driveway at our Airbnb in Brevard a couple years ago. It's slowly taken over my yard, and to me, it's just that hairy mint from Brevard. 
Mints are really aggressive, so it's best not to plant them in your flower beds. But I love this mint in tzatziki sauce in the summer, and I boil it for tea or potpourri in the winter cold season. It's high in antioxidants and other beneficial plant compounds that may help balance hormones, lower blood sugar, and improve digestion. It may even reduce stress and improve memory. Both wild violets and domestic violas are edible, beautiful, and incredibly high in vitamin C. I bet you have some in your yard right now. Violets and dandelions make the most beautiful spring carpet that I know of. We used to play a game called roosters or chicken fight, something like that. It's similar to pulling a wishbone, but you hook together two violets, pull them, and whoever keeps their head, which is the blossom, wins a wish. Sochin or cut leaf cone flower was a traditional Cherokee spring green. I planted some two or three years ago and we're just getting a good patch. It tastes a bit like celery and it grows to at least 10 feet tall. I had no idea it would get so tall, but I watched bees feed on it from our kitchen window last year and that's at least 15 feet up. There's some great articles on the internet about Sochin and how to collect and use it properly. My favorite spring salad dressing is just three parts olive oil to one or two parts lemon juice or vinegar if you prefer some salt and pepper. There you go. Give it a rinse, mix it up in a bowl, and you have a spring power salad to feed your body and soul. I didn't walk more than 50 feet from our door to find it.